I have a question for you. Do you feel self-respect towards yourself today? Do you feel like the queen of your reality, regardless of what the circumstance is showing you? If you are not feeling this way, this video will remind you how to exit your lazy girl era and become the disciplined, badass queen that you were always meant to be. Let's get started. One, acknowledge how fed up you are with your old reality. See, the thing with discipline is that it doesn't come because we've decided one day, oh, I want to be motivated. You know, I want to be a best version of myself because everything is so okay right now. The thing that causes us to get off our ass and do something with our life is when it's so painful to settle for mediocrity. It's so painful to see ourselves as being pathetic, lazy, and a loser. Even though we're not that, but if we see ourselves that way every single day, the emotion of stagnation, the feeling of I'm not moving forward is painful enough for you to do anything to shift your inner identity. That's why I'm saying that the first key is not exactly to write down your goals or where you want to be or who you want to be because who knows that when they're settling right now. You may kind of know what you want in life, but you won't have that willpower to really stick with the discipline that will get you there until you are so fed up in every inch of your body, in every single cell of your body you've had enough and that's when you will start to really move. So decide right now, have you had enough yet? What is your pain level right now? Is it five out of 10 or 10 out of 10? If the level of pain you have toward your reality is just a five out of 10, then don't worry, stay the same. But if your pain level is 10 out of 10, fully acknowledge that and really feel the pain of staying the same. Know the exact consequences of you not getting off your ass to do something meaningful with your life and how painful it is to live with that consequence. Which leads to number two, decide on the standards that you will not break for yourself. See, from my personal experience, I don't actually achieve my goals because I really, really want to. I achieve my goals because my standards don't allow me to dip below it. In other words, if I see myself as being a fit person, as a beach clip creator, the standards that I have to keep in order to keep doing the beach clips, it's not the same thing as, oh, today I want to do beach clips, so I'm just gonna do a bit of workout. It's more like I can't afford to lose this. That's why I have to work out. I can't afford to stagnate. I can't afford to be weak on the sand. So therefore, regardless of where I am, I have to be fit. I have to work out. And even if I don't work out for one hour, but at least I have to maintain that momentum. Now, do you see where I'm trying to approach this? This is not about an airy fairy. Oh, today I woke up and I just wanna be fit. It's like, what is the consequence of you not being fit? What is the consequences of you letting yourself go, not being beautiful, not feeling radiant, not feeling like a winner? And the interesting thing is, if we are able to see the hardship that comes from breaking that standard, it will be so much easier for you to maintain the bare minimum for yourself. So what is your bare minimum? My bare minimum is that if I cannot work out 30 minutes every single day, which I personally can't, then I have to substitute that with eating very well. I have to be able to balance out my portion, consciously eat, and also move my body at the same time so that I maintain that fit momentum. So the bare minimum as a student is that once you are assigned a homework to do, you will try to finish it off within three days. You will not leave everything to the last minute because doing everything for one or two days is so much more painful than just getting a little bit done every three days. Once you get that momentum of discipline going, it is easier to keep that momentum. Number three, merging your identity. So the person that you are today and the person that you want to be has a gap. And now you want to be taking incremental actions that bridges that gap each day. And the more times you take those small actions, the more it becomes a repeated sense of confidence. And the reason why it's better to take really small actions every single day is because you are building your own inner stamina. But if you try to achieve one big goal and you really, really force it without becoming the person who has the stamina to sustain that goal, then you will achieve the goal, but you won't grow as a person, if you know what I mean. So the aim here is for you to grow as a person, of a YouTube creator, of a high performing student, of a millionaire, of an entrepreneur, or as somebody who thrives in corporate. This is about building your identity versus just achieving a one-time goal. So now I want you to really get to know your body and mind. How does your body operate? Are you the kind of person that works best at night? and prefers to sleep in the morning? 
Or are you the kind of person who gets moving in the morning and sleeps really early? See, all of these things are really important to identify because if you know what time you are productive at, you want to then take more actions during your peak state and then allow yourself to rest during your downtime. If you are constantly winning while you're performing in your peak state, whether that peak state happens at 10 p.m. or 4 p.m. or 8 a.m., that winning momentum will then make you see yourself differently. You will start to identify yourself as, holy shit, I am a winner. I'm winning every single time at 4 p.m. Every single time I enter the peak state, I'm constantly achieving an output. I'm constantly winning at my goals. Every single time my muscles feel relaxed at 7 p.m. and I start working out from 7 to 8 p.m., damn, I feel like a winner. I see myself as somebody that keeps promises to herself and it feels really awesome. And that is how you bridge the gap between your current self and your future self. By slowly identifying your peak state, then taking those incremental actions repeatedly without getting bored of it, but feeling inspired to keep winning at it to the point where that gap is breached and you permanently become the new identity. Reinventing yourself is like playing Mario. It's kind of like winning a game where level one, I've conquered my workout routine. Level two, I've conquered my affirmations and mental routine. Number three, I'm starting to conquer my career routines. I'm starting to see money flowing in as a result of the two layers that I've built for myself, which was seeing myself as earning exponential income with my mental programming and seeing myself as being fit to do anything with my physical programming. And that is by conditioning your body to be fit and always get yourself moving. And then you may start to get to level four where you have high status, better friendships, better connections, better partners. You notice that the more you win, the more you don't get bored of it, right? And that's why winning momentum is so important because the more you win, the more your routines won't feel boring to you. The more it will excite you to want to challenge yourself to keep winning it. And finally, number four, staying in your new inner identity and maintaining your discipline. See again, the most interesting thing about goal setting is that if we are able to do 100 push-ups every day for 30 days, but we were forcing ourselves to do it, we won't exactly focus on improving our mental strength, our resilience or our emotional state, but everything was just about that 100 a day push-up. Then what happens is that once that 30 days is over, you start to have a sense of confusion of, who am I? Do I keep doing this or do I not keep doing this? Whereas if you sustain the inner identity of somebody who just works out, somebody who just films video, somebody who just does public speaking and you're confident at it, then you're always able to regularly achieve your goals. And that's why if you just started on the bare minimum standard and you've also incrementally took actions to bridge that gap, then what happens is that you start to normalize this new life routine. Now being fit is a part of your lifestyle. Having a great mental health health is a part of your lifestyle. So regardless of whether you use affirmation tracks to rewire your subconscious mind before bed, regardless of you do your affirmations in the morning, you meditate every day, you do your ice baths, go for your runs, go for your swims. If that is a part of who you are and you're not exactly doing it because everyone else is doing it and you just want to be a part of a friend group, but you're doing it solely for you as a part of your inner identity, then you always maintain that goal no matter what. That is why instead of you setting really unrealistic targets for yourself, what you want to do is actually embody the identity every single day repeatedly until it's automatic for you. Like going into a room and you open the door, that's automatic for you. Or when you go to your couch and turn on Netflix, the act of pressing the remote button is automatic. You want to make working out, doing positive affirmations, having positive inner self-talk, achieving your goals, working on your dream career, making your dream income, a normal automatic thing in your life. And the question is, what if you stagnate? So when you stagnate, what you do is that you still embody the version of you who's always evolving yourself according to what excites you. So in other words, you already have the attitude of the winner who lives a 10 out of 10 life. So regardless, if you change up your routine, from swimming to walking, cycling to running, dancing to singing, the foundation of you being a disciplined person who loves to build a positive momentum and loves winning at those games is still there. So therefore you never get stagnant because you are identity focused. It's not about just achieving the goal and it's finished. It's more about, okay, I'm being this identity and how can I take this identity to achieve every single kind of goal that excites me? Shifting into the new parallel timeline where the version of you who wins at 
everything already exists and tuning your frequency to match that timeline. Okay guys, so this is how you enter your disciplined girl era and permanently stop being lazy. Hope you guys enjoy your day and see you soon. Bye-bye.